loved the square. It's an incredible movie, and, and one thing it left me with was just a whirl of questions in my head, because, I mean, here you have this incredible, powerful, nonviolent movement, and then it gets boiled down to two choices, both of which they didn't want, the existing establishment or the, the Muslim Brotherhood. Did we do all this fight for freedom just to become a Muslim, an Islamic state? So what, uh, where, where, did that, where did that take us? And that's exactly right. I mean, I think that the choice was very depressing for many of the uh, revolutionaries and the people that fought in the square, the choice between the military or the Brotherhood in the end of the presidency. However, I do think that people who have fought and people who are you know, in Egypt continuing to fight are not going to allow 30 years to go by as their rights are taken. I mean, it only took, when Morsi did a power grab and changed the constitution, it took people only a week and a half to be back in the streets. And people are continuing to fight. So that has changed. And there's been a major blow to the establishment. I mean, the, the, the revolution was about bringing down the establishment, right. whether it was the army, the police state, uh, Mubarak, the Brotherhood, and there's been major blows to all of them. So, you know, there was this line um, that one of our characters said that where he basically said, you know, we've, we've brought down Mubarak, we've brought down the police state, we've given a major blow to the Brotherhood and, and, um, and to the army, and so once we're done with the Brotherhood, then we can start building our country the way that it should be built. So. Well, you know, it seems to be always much easier to bring down a dictatorship than to build the alternative. Well, that's uh, right. I mean, the, the idea that you could actually change a country in two weeks, um, as I think was sort of the message that was given on uh, television around the world when Mubarak was brought down, is a fairy tale. I mean, it was it was easy for people to get on the same page about bringing down a dictator, but it's a lot more difficult to sit in a square and figure out the future that you want to build and how you want to build it. Well, now, it seems that... Uh, uh, at first, people did a great job of getting the army to be a part of their movement and be behind, behind it. And then it seemed to me that they lost that, partly because of particular military elements did incredibly brutal acts. But also, it seems to me it's because maybe people didn't um, understand the power of nonviolence. It seemed to me that every time someone threw a rock at the police, they were decreasing the power of the, uh, of, of the nonviolent movement. This is a difficult question because I mean I am I'm completely with you in that a nonviolent movement you have to do everything you can to stay nonviolent and not to throw that rock. And if you see in the film, I mean it takes it's about three quarters through the film that one of our main characters basically gets so angry that he picks up a rock and, and throws it. Um, but the rocks compared to the bullets that were being shot. Yeah. Well, there, there's no question that 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 the rock was justified, but but it didn't have any power. And didn't it didn't just decrease the power because like the possibility of winning over the military, the people to be part of your cause suddenly gets lost. I don't think that there was any. Um, I don't think that there was any hope that people had of really winning over the military. Um, I think that uh, the military has had a position in Egypt for a long time where they put themselves above the Constitution, above the law, um, their budgets are not revealed, um, and that well, wasn't about to change anything. Well, let me ask another, maybe not, maybe I used the wrong word, winning over the military, winning over many of the soldiers, because the soldiers were people like them, and I thought one of the powerful parts here in the movie was showing so many of the soldiers originally supporting it. That's right, and I, I do think that, I, yes, I, I do think that throwing that rock does um, tend to decrease the power, especially to, um, to the public. On the other hand, there's this weird thing that I learned, which is which over the last two years, which is that the fights would happen, but then the public would not really pay attention or be involved in that until there was major conflict in the square. So until somebody, until there was blood, and this is why you hear this, which sounds sort of crazy, and especially somebody who's very supportive of nonviolent movements, until um, the, the news cameras cover things, and the news cameras don't cover things unless there's blood, yeah. you, don't get the, you don't get the support of the people. And that's what happened in the end with the um, in the end of the film. So it's a very complicated sort of situation, because if you asked me two years ago, I would say, you know, yeah, that rock was the, is completely the wrong thing to do. 
now I am not I'm not so sure. So you're saying the rock might have had some power be exactly because it alienated people, brought down greater repression, greater repression meant more violence, more violence attracted the media, more media meant more people got to hear your issues. Is that what you're saying? I'm I'm saying something like that. I'm saying that the battle that they were fighting was so much bigger. They're trying to bring down the military regime. Mubarak was not brought down unless there were because Mubarak was brought down because there were many, many, many people in that square, you know, and many, many people on, in in cities all over Egypt, right? Those people would not have come down unless they had seen what had happened right. to people on television, unless they were not, they, they were outraged by what was happening. So I think that the that the bigger fight, the bigger battle that our characters fight is to bring down the military establishment, to not be a military-run state. Well, and there isn't even the bigger fight after that, how to build something where people are included and involved in the process of governing the country. That's right, that's right. And uh, that's exactly what, and, and the fight against the Brotherhood is not about religion. It's it's about dictatorship. And right. so, you know, the question of like religious versus not religious, it's more about the question of dictatorship right. versus no dictatorship. And right. the Brotherhood is using democracy in order to establish a dictatorship. Right. Okay, no, I mean, it was, yeah, no, I mean, it was my conversation with Ahmed, one of our main characters. I would be like, no, 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 you can't throw a rock. Don't do that. You're, you know, you guys are in the right. You're like making yourself in the wrong. You can't do that. And he would just explain to me and say, listen, you know, we can, need to keep sacrificing ourselves in order for this system to change and unless we keep sacrificing ourselves the system is not going to change and that starts with confronting these guys wow. so right. it was uh you know I, There's a dilemma. so your film showed there are no easy answers there's no easy answers you know i mean it wasn't working to sit in the square non-violently yeah. They get cleared away. They tried that a few times. Uh -huh. Well, well, very interesting. Well, uh, the, continue, the revolution continues. The revolution Hopefully, it can become continues. the last revolution. And El Soura Mustamera. Okay, <laughs> thank you. How do you say that? El Soura Mustamera. Ah, perfect. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.